Hello, it's Patrick Poe again. I uh, am reading another piece of legislation, the uh, Affordable Health Care Act, and it's kind of confusing me the, the the contradictions in the in the act, and also the uh, the different sites, government sites that you go and sign up for the uh, health care. Now, I put in information. to sign up for health care and it gives me three options one option is over three thousand a year and the total is about half my income can't afford that the next one down is over two thousand a year well why not half my income I still can't afford that so look at the last option and it's called disaster coverage nothing else it's guaranteed 8% of my income, never to rise above that. Well, probably means it'll never go below that either. These are normal, regular options that the, the website gave me. I was discussing it with a friend, and he says, Well, here you go. Here's a link for a waiver. So I follow the link, and I read, and I read. Well, great. Financially, technically, I qualify. My income is below the minimum requirements. So I read lower. There has to be no plan available 8% or less. So if all plans were above 8% of my income, I could get a waiver and not have to pay for this insurance that I can't afford anyways. Well, I have insurance, so I really don't need it. So what I'm doing is I'm doing research on this because I have family and friends that do not have insurance. And in looking at this, it's, it's ridiculous. I have a family member who would have to pay if he switched to Obamacare insurance or, or the Affordable Health Care Act insurance. His premium would be 30 times what he pays now. 30 times for a family of four. Is that affordable? Well, then we look into, uh, well, I look into whether he would be able to get the government assistance. Nope, he makes too much. So he makes too much to get the government assistance on a plan that has a premium 30 times what he's currently paying. He pays it all himself. He's a subcontractor. He does not get assistance to pay it currently. Hmm. Odd that. I thought it was supposed to be affordable. So let's go back to me. I don't qualify for the write-off. I don't qualify for the assistance. I don't make enough money. So I look down and, well, even though I don't qualify for the write-off, if I were to qualify for the write-off, I would qualify to get a low-income disaster insurance plan. Oh, wait. That sounds familiar. So flip over to the other website. One of the regular policies is called a disaster relief insurance plan. What's the difference? Nothing. Except for this. The other plan on the other site disqualifies me from getting a waiver. Well, let's see. If I did not have insurance currently, I wouldn't qualify for assistance to pay for my insurance. I wouldn't qualify for a waiver to not have to pay for the insurance. At my income level, I can't even afford to pay 8% of my income. So what's that mean? According to the government website, that means I have to pay for the expensive insurance. Oh, that's great. That means I still have to pay 8% whether I get a waiver or not. If I had no insurance, the only way I could afford it would be to give up a place to live. Because i got to have heat and gas Especially in these winter months that are coming up, so don't freeze to death. 
And if I gave up the other things, it still wouldn't make up enough for me to uh, afford the health plan. I wouldn't afford to eat. So if, yeah, I'm a big guy, but that's from eating the wrong foods. So, is it really affordable? If I can't get a waiver, so I don't have to get it, if I didn't have insurance, I would have to pay too much. I couldn't afford it. How is that affordable to me? Did they even read this before they uh, signed it into law? I'm telling you right now, I don't think so. The Supreme Court didn't read it when they, when they stamped their approval on it. And those who passed it didn't read it either. How is this affordable? How is this fair? So people who cannot get the waiver and cannot afford the insurance are going to get fined at the end of every year. Because they can't afford it. They can't get the waiver because they don't technically qualify. Now I could be wrong, but so far, reading the 95 pages of this document, I'm not. I'm getting worried. I have friends who are, friends and family who are going to be hurting because of this. It's not helping. 95 pages into a nearly a thousand page document? that they didn't read before they passed and then they have contradictions starting from the beginning to the 95th page contradictions on nearly every page in my opinion I'm not a lawyer but reading this it gives me a headache they say one thing in one section and the next section they contradict the section before how is that going to make it understandable or affordable for the US public I ask you, why don't you read it? Why don't you tell me where I'm wrong so far? I'll post another video when I get farther down than 95 pages. I'll post another video and tell you whether I'm still confused and whether I think it's still unaffordable. Because so far, it's confusing, it's unaffordable, and it contradicts itself in so many places. Who passed this law? Who is not representing the people? Badmouth me all you want, but until you read it for yourself, until you look into it for yourself, where's your proof? Somebody told you? Read. Do it for yourself. Find the information for yourself, because until you do it for yourself and stop listening to other people, you don't really have any argument on whether this is a fair law or not. Read it. I'll post a link.